and I have the honor of representing the, the 26th district. Um, take a good look at it because December 31st of 2012, it will be no more. It will be part of the history books. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that no one knows what the 26th Congressional District will look like. Uh, it is a work in progress. Apparently a three-judge panel in San Antonio is going to redraw the Congressional Districts in Texas to some extent, uh, revamp the maps the legislature approved, and we'll have to see what they do. Uh, whatever is delivered to me, uh, I will promise you that I will do my best to represent the all citizens in the area, regardless of political persuasion. And really that is the attitude that I took in 2005 when the 26th Congressional District took on its current form. And in many ways, Fort Worth was not something that had been on my radar screen. I, I grew up in, in Denton. I've lived in the area for 60 years. But I wasn't a native of Fort Worth. And to educate myself about Fort Worth, I came to a chamber meeting very early on in that congressional term and uh, learned that Fort Worth was uh, voted, I think, the most livable city in the United States. And uh, it was great to be a part of that. Uh, but as the, the chamber went through their presentation, we had the stockyards in the north, we had the museums and the hospitals in the south, we had the wonderful developments over in the west. But my part of Fort Worth wasn't mentioned, and it hurt me. So I made it my goal, my obligation, my task, to make certain that people knew what Mayor Price has just told you, the wonderful opportunity that you have here in Southeast Fort Worth, and that we, that we lift up those parts that are good, and we help those parts that need help. And that is really the mission that I took to you in 2005 when we first started this Economic Development Summit. Now it has changed. It has morphed some over the years. We, this year we're not using the pro professional forum, insta, the public forum institute that you remember the little handheld thing, so we don't have those this year. Uh, perhaps we're on a little leaner budget reflecting a lot of things that are, that are just economic realities in the country as a whole. But Southeast Fort Worth is still moving ahead, and it's moving ahead. There, there are significant successes that we can look to, and the mayor mentioned some of those. I would also be remiss if I did not mention that over the last six years, we've had many good partners who've helped us with this conference. Lockheed Martin, TXU, Alcon Labs, Hillwood Development, Fort Worth T, who I see here this morning, American Airlines, Omni Bank, who's here this morning, and, and we really appreciate all of the help that people have given us over the years in, in making this forum available to you. Um, back in 2005, um, you know, you go back and you review some of the things that have happened since then. In 2005, we got together uh, in a hotel on the south end of, of Fort Worth, and we talked about the need to change. Really, one of the basic things we needed to change were just perceptions about southeast Fort Worth. It wasn't so much the, the problems were, that were present were not insurmountable, but the generally held perceptions posed a barrier. Um, the area had had its series of economic misfortunes, but it also had unique advantages, and the ability to uh, advantage those and in terms of both infrastructure and workforce were things that seemed absolutely doable, and as it turns out, with many people participating, that in fact was correct. So certainly, we're grateful for the educational opportunities that exist here on the ground in Southeast Fort Worth. Uh, institution like Texas Wesleyan, unlike almost any other private college that I've visited in, uh, around in the state, I think you do a great job. You keep it economically within the reach of, of disadvantaged folks, and you make it count. You make their time here count, uh, President Slavak, and I, and I appreciate what you do here. When we first talked six years ago, we spent a great deal of time talking about the great potential of the human element, the human capital that exists here in, in East and Southeast Fort Worth. And we wanted, to be at a, we wanted to be a catalyst. We wanted to help develop that human, cal, uh, that human capital. So at that first summit, many recommendations were, were submitted. We had broke out into working groups, and, and people put pencil to paper and, and came up with suggestions. And uh, just a few of the takeaways from those early days. Uh, the thoughts that Tarrant, uh, the top executives in Tarrant County needed to come together to address some of the opportunities in East and Southeast Fort Worth and developers to, to discuss other economic opportunities. And has that happened? Well, to some degree it has. Does there need to be more? You bet. But there are some successes to which we can, we can correctly point. Um, 
building standards. And to this, we are grateful to the city to stringently enforce building codes. Uh, the old broken window metaphor that's used so often that if you're not taking care of those things, the ultimate decline of the neighborhood then progresses. And so we're grateful to the city to all of the work that, that it has done. That posed additional challenges with lots that had been cleared. And yeah, it's great for developers in other part of my district. There's lots of wide open spaces, as you can see. They come in and turn what used to be a cornfield into a neighborhood, and that can happen pretty quickly and pretty cheaply, and you can turn a lot of money. It's harder to come into the inner city and take a lot that has now been cleared and to put a new livable home on that lot that someone can own and enjoy and be proud of for their entire lifetime. But it is happening. And of course, Mayor Price acknowledged location, location, location. Gas is $3 a gallon. It was in 2005. Guess what? It's probably not going to get a lot cheaper during the rest of my lifetime. We are close, close to the employment opportunities, close to the um, <clears throat> forgive me, I'm a Republican, I don't say public transit, I say rapid transit, uh, opportunities afforded by the Fort Worth T. But we are close to things. Uh, there are some things that need to be closer indeed. And some of the things we'll talk about later in the summit today are the lack of the availability of, of reasonable places to go grocery shopping. And that is one of the key things where we need to concentrate on the future here in, in East and Southeast Fort Worth. I want to stress <clears throat> that this is all of the successes to which... Uh, the mayor pointed this morning, and, and indeed there are several. Yesterday I got to go to the, uh, the welcome for the new executive director at the Dallas VA, uh, Jeff uh, <clears throat> Milligan. He said his name is Gilligan with an M. Jeff Milligan is, is now the head of the Fort Worth VA. And I just got to tell you, what a, what a sense of pride walking into that facility. Five years ago, it was barely on the design board. Six years ago, they were talking about building it somewhere completely different and that it would take a long time to work through the normal wheels of the federal process at the Veterans Administration to get a new VA clinic. When I first took office in 2005 for representing Fort Worth, I went to visit the VA clinic, and it wasn't that old. It was a nice facility, but because of the crush of returning veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, they were on top of each other. You had the ophthalmologist and the urologist basically working, in, not in the same room, but in the same chair. Uh, it, yeah, it's different ends, but still, it was a problem for them, and you had good men and women working there and trying to help uh, our, our nation's heroes, and at the same time, they were, they were stymied because of lack of space. Well, that no longer exists, and really within a very short period of time, five years, uh, that clinic is up and running, and it's a beautiful facility. The, the, it is a template for uh, other facilities being built around the country today, the fact that it was up and running in such a, such a short period of time. The Sierra Vista neighborhood at Riverside and Barrie, what's happening at the Masonic, the old Masonic home, the building refacing here on, on Rosedale Street uh, that have so much improved the, just the, the drive up appeal to, to campus. These are things that have happened. They haven't be happened because of one individual. They've happened because a lot of people have worked together. People in the community, people at the city level, people at the county level, people at the federal level have been willing to put Sometimes put politics aside. Roy Brooks will be here later this morning. I never know what he's going to say. It's always entertaining. Uh, put politics aside and work for the good of the community. And that's really what this summit represents. So I, I thank you all so much for joining me here this morning. Mayor Price, I just got to tell you, um, your predecessor, Mayor Moncrief, was always very good. He did come to most of these. He would generally put me about 45 minutes behind because his welcoming remarks would take a little longer than, than anyone anticipated. They do have a big clock here for me to, to follow, so I'm happy to report to you that we are, that we are, staying, uh, we are staying close to time. But this is a few of the things that we've learned over the years in, in, doing, these, in doing these summits. So there's a tremendous amount of poten potential here. Think good things can happen. Good work can be done, and people need to work together in order for that to happen. So again, I, I thank you all for being here this morning. Let me just say a little bit about uh, the, uh, the day and the, today's speakers. Um, we are going to get an, an update on economic development and probably go into a great deal more de detail on the projects that both uh, Mayor Price and I have, have mentioned. Andre McEwing is going to be talking with us and, and likely take us through a number of those projects. Michael Morris from the North Texas Council of Government is going to talk about some of the transportation issues, in particular the one that the mayor referenced, which is a, a concern of mine, and Curvy Hawkins um, from the T. 
and then our keynote speaker, Richard Fisher, who is the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, will deliver his address, and he, I think, has agreed to take uh, some Q&A after that. Um, let me just tell you, Richard Fisher is kind of, a, uh, kind of a departure from some of the keynote speakers we've had here before. But uh, a year ago, uh, the president of the, the Dallas Federal Reserve came to me, or, or we had opportunity to talk, and he said, Congressman, any time I can come to your district and, and speak to your constituents, I know there's a lot of concern, I'll be happy to do that. In fact, last year he came to Louisville and I, I put together something that the builders and the bankers were, were kind of both at me. Uh, the builders say the bankers won't loan any money. The bankers said, God, did you see what they're trying to borrow? Um, so it was a problem that I had. And so I thought, well, I'll invite both groups and I'll put the president of the Fed in the middle of it and let him sort it out. And it, it was helpful. I think uh, some people got some, some concerns out there and, and they got some answers to some questions. And maybe things, maybe the needle moved a little bit as far as freeing up some of the access to capital. But when I talked to President Fisher this year, he said, uh, would you like me to come back to Louisville? And I said, you know, Mr. President, where I really need you, where I really need you to be is Southeast Fort Worth. And it's not so much that the people there need to hear what you have to say, but you need to hear what they have to say. And you need to know that Southeast Fort Worth exists. I mean, the president is, is here, I think, in Fort Worth talking to some other group downtown this morning, and he comes to Fort Worth frequently, and I've heard him speak at the chamber. But um, this is just kind of a, a, a place that he drives through. I need him to know that East Fort Worth is here and what's happening on the ground, and that when I talk to him in the future about some of the things we're trying to do in the area, it's not a foreign concept to him. So uh, I'm grateful that the president decided to, uh, or uh, is giving us some of his time this morning. Uh, please do think of good questions for him because he, uh, he, he needs to hear from us uh, more than, uh, almost as much as we need to hear from him. Following President Fisher, this is something that we started last year and has really become a, an integral part of this summit. We're going to hear from the Healthy Community P Communities Panel with Elizabeth Sobel Blum, Dr. Heather Kitzman Ulrich, Dr. Uh, Ann Salier Caldwell, and Katie Rudd. Uh, this is an important concept and, and one that has uh, certainly has be has, is on my radar screen and has become more important over the, the last year. I do uh, the infant mortality task force every September during infant mortality month. Many of us are aware of the problems that we have here in Tarrant County with a higher infant mortality rate than is uh, any of us want. Um, in preparing for that this year and going through some of the data prepared by the, the Tarrant County Health Department, um, <clears throat> some things stood out to me. And I was prepared to look at their data and say we've got a problem with, with uninsurance. But in, in fact, that's not the case. Um, probably 95% of the people affected in the infant mortality task force's numbers had insurance. 60% of those had private health insurance. The rest had Medicaid and SCHIP. And that was kind of a revelation to me. You can't just put it off to the fact that, well, it's poverty, it's uninsurance. Uh, they seem to be covered. Well, what about when do they come to the doctor? Do they get the prenatal care that they need? Yeah, in fact, they do. They show up in the first trimester. What were two things that stood out in that study? One were clinical issues, which is really important to me because that's us. That's the doctors and nurses in hospitals. If we need to improve, then for heaven's sakes, let's recognize that. Let's address it and, and get on with that. That's within our, our power and grasp. Let's, let's do that. And the other was maternal obesity. 50% of the people affected fell into a category that uh, would, would put them in that, in that slot. And that's something that can be fixed. That's not easy. I know I need to lose 20 pounds. I got it. I'm working on it. I hear my wife every day. Um, so I know the, how, how, what the challenge that is. But at the same time, we cannot ask people to make healthy choices if we don't provide them a place to make that choice. And you can't make that choice at a convenience store. And I know I'm going to hear from the convenience store people. Every time I say that, I hear from them. And I appreciate what they do. I appreciate that I can get Fritos at a moment's notice on the way home. But that's not the way to make healthy choices, particularly for a young mother who is trying to make, do the right thing uh, as she's carrying her child. So that is why the, the Healthy Foods Initiative is so important to me. We want to talk about fixing some of these problems. Yeah, it's great to have a bunch of government programs that can help. But if the simple things, 
can be taking care of some of these. For heaven's sakes, let's do those things that were, are within our power and, in fact, are not all that pricey to do. And then we're going to wrap up the day with a, uh, uh, with a business roundtable. I see Mr. McNeely coming in, and he's always been good to, to be here at this summit. He's going to participate in that as our... Uh, some of the other decision makers and, and business builders in the area, Sandra McLaughlin of Empire Roofing, Tom Dexter from Samsil, Mr. McNeely of FBM Trading, Sal Adamski from Workforce Solutions to sort of explore a little bit about what we can do here on the ground to improve the employment aspect of Southeast Fort Worth.